sands are more in number than the sands of the sea. Give us, O oh Master of all, so that we may receive the incorruptible crown. O thou who in every season and every hour in heaven and on earth, worship and glorify, O Christ our God, on suffering, greatly merciful and deeply compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, all is all meant to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Do thou the same one accept those who are prayers in this hour, and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, guide and write our minds, cleanse our thoughts, and deliver us from every affliction. Compass us about the Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have 
growth from corruption, O thou who lovest mankind. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. By thy death hast death been slain, O Lord, and by thy resurrection hast thou saved the world, O Savior. Blessed are the
foundations of the earth, and the heavens are also the works of thine hands. They shall all perish if thou shalt endure. They shall all wear out like a garment. Thou changest them like a rain and they pass away. But thou art ever the same, and thy years have no end. But to which of the angels hath the other said, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall inherit salvation? Therefore we must give the more honest peace to the things we have heard, lest at any time we should drift away. For if the words spoken by angels with steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we can't neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as other priests to offer sacrifices first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once in offering himself for the law, maketh man priests who have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law, Make it the Son who is perfected forevermore. Now this is the sum of things which we have spoken. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the holies and the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. And to your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He who dwells in the help of the Most High shall abide under the shelter of the God of heaven.
So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of the all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Spirit within you, and you shall live. 
and I will bless you in your own land. For he is the true light coming into the world, in whom is the life of man. He is the true light shining in the darkness of hell, which the darkness of hell cannot extinguish. He is the great light that, as Isaiah foresaw, the people sitting in the darkness of hell can now see. For the light of resurrection, the light of the wisdom of God, the uncreated light that is the effulgence of the Father's brilliance, has now risen on those lying dead in the region and shadow of death. The same light that was already streaming forth from the Lord's tomb when his body was placed in it, signaling the dawning of the mystical Sabbath that Moses prefigured. The paralytic this morning that is an image of our soul that is dead because of our sins and trespasses. The root of our death is giving the love of our heart not to the Lord, our soul's true heavenly bridegroom, but to the idols of the passions. When we give ourselves to the pleasures of greed and lust, anger, entitlement, sloth, and all the rest, we are basically committing suicide. As the prophets say, those who give their love to the idols become just like them. We have eyes that see not, ears that hear not, hands that feel not, feet that cannot walk, mouths that cannot speak. They become in the hidden man of the heart, paralytics. They become spiritual corpses. Slain by many sins, it says in the Matins for last Thursday. Slain by the idols of the passions that I love and give myself to, I bear in life the soul that is dead. But observe the Lord's tomb and how his body was placed in it this, in this morning's gospel. The Lord is in the house. He's inside the tomb. He's not outside of us. And the Lenten cry of the church calls each one of us to come and let us see, let us observe with the word bearing women our life lying in the tomb, that he may give life to those that in their tombs lie dead. Observe how his body was placed inside the tomb. The Lord is inside the root of our death. He is inside our disobedience in love for the idols. And He's filling our death and our disobedience and our love for the idols. He's filling it with Himself, the life of all, in His obedience and love for the, for the Father. The tomb was sealed by a very large stone, it said, so that no one could get in to see our life lying in the tomb. So also in this morning's Gospel, the door into the house the Lord was in was blocked by the very large crowd of people so that the paralytic and those with him could not get in. So observe the four men carrying the paralytic. They are an image of the Merbury women carrying us by their prayers. The Merbury women, it says, Observing the Lord's tomb and how his body was placed in it. Observing, let's say, that it was sealed by a very large stone and one could not get into it. Observing that, it says, they turned. And literally, they descended. Reading St. Luke theologically, they descended with their mind into their heart in the stillness of the Lord's Sabbath rest. That is to say, they sought another way into the Lord's tomb, a hidden way, the hidden way of prayer and fasting. Like the murderers, the four men carrying the paralytic, and they see that they cannot get into the house through the door, find another way to get into the house where the Lord is. They break down the roof of the house. Let's say that they set out to demolish the wall of enmity that separates us from the Lord deep inside the house of our heart. 
and by their help the paralytic descends into the house, into the tomb, and into the living presence of the Lord, our life. The mirror bearers, it says, rested. In other words, they descended into the stillness of the hidden man of the heart in prayer, according to the commandment. What are we receiving from the church throughout this Lenten season? Especially from our readings in Proverbs. Is it not the commandments of wisdom? The commandments of the Lord Jesus, for He is the wisdom of God, the very radiance of the Father's brilliance. And what are the commandments of wisdom given to us in Proverbs all about? Are they not about guarding our heart with all diligence? For from our heart flow the springs of life. For the fountain of life, Jesus Christ, is in the house. He's in the heart, where we lie dead in our sins and trespasses. And if we give ourselves to Him, our souls true bridegroom, if we cleave to Him and unite our death to His death, He destroys our death by His death. He cleanses us from our sins, He raises us from death to life, and gives life to us who are in the tombs. But if we choose to live in the house of the passions, as wisdom teaches us in Proverbs, we step onto the path that leads away from the Lord in the house, and procures the destruction of our soul. Here then the Church is teaching us how to make our way into the Lord's house at the end of Matins on Great and Holy Saturday. We will come back into the Church after having processed three times around it. We'll come in under the shroud and we'll pass into the Church as into the Lord's tomb. This is how we do it. We take up the cross of the Lenten disciplines. Prayer, fasting, and rest according to our strength, according to our circumstances. And we let the mirror-bearing women carry us by another way, the hidden way of the inner exodus of the gospel, carrying us into the tomb of our heart, where with faith and love we draw near to the Lord who is in the house, to die with Him, and put to death all that is earthly in us in the power of his cross, the power of the Lenten fast, that we may rise with him in the joy of his holy resurrection on Holy Pascha, and live no more in the house of this world bounded by death on all sides, but live in the house of the Lord's Sabbath rest, his tomb, that has become for us the fountain of our eternal life in his holy resurrection. Amen. Most holy God, all will save us. Glory to Jesus Christ. Susan. Mm -hmm.
put us to this service in reverence to you and the Lord King of our wealth, through all the grace of the Holy Spirit and all the gifts that are about to be set forth. And God, in all the time, I'm going to be sent of glory to thee, to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and on the ages of the angels.
to worship thee with your thanks, to live and glorify thee in your mutual and existing God. I do all the convenience of our rational worship, for the contrived heart and the spirit of humility. For thou hast granted us the knowledge of thy truth, so can I do my delights to make all thy praises to thee heard. For I tell them all my wonders at all times. O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, both visible and invisible, who sittest upon the throne of God, and the whole is the best, thou beginning, invisible and comprehensible, indescribable, painful is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, the seal of thy very likeness, the healing being the Father in himself, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before the ages, the life and sanctification, the power of the true life, through whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life giving power, the self out of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worshiped thee, and sent up to thee in our ceasing kingdom of glory, and all things are thy servants. Thou art praised by angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, and authorities. Powers and many are charitable. Round about who stand the seraph, one with six wings and the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly. Ride one to another with unceasing voices, and ever silent songs of glory. Singing the triumph of the earth, counting for waiting, and saying, Holy Nation, 
And having cleansed us with water, and sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, and gave himself as a ransom to death, in which we were held captive, sold under sin, and descending to the cross into hell, that he might fill all things in himself, he loosed the pangs of death, and when he had risen on the third day, having made for all flesh a path of the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be held by corruption, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the first born of the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence of all. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of the Lord, and he will come to render for the God according to his works. And as the memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things which we have set forth according to his command. When he was about to go forth his own journey down the road of the night to the in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread and was holy in your hand. When he had shown us the evening of all the and had given him thanks and blessed and hallowed him to the Lord, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Hey, he, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, 
Hearts and justice, teachers and ever righteous spirit, make perfect in faith, and spread the name of our own poor and all children. All the blessed and glorious, let it now go, and ever heard your name. Remember, O 
now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Passion. 
Uh, please understand also that these uh, donations that are uh, whatever is left over uh, uh, from the uh, flowers for Pascha, we take that and we apply it towards flowers for Christmas and maybe even for Pentecost. So, um, you know, give generously because the uh, donations are being used for flowers on special occasions multiple times. This afternoon, follow, uh, starting during the coffee hour, I assume, uh, Sally will be uh, uh, teaching us, those who are interested, uh, I'm not one of those, but those of you who are interested on how to put together a baptismal gown, uh, 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 how to sew together a baptismal gown, cut it out and put it together, because we need nine of them. We start receiving our catechumens into the church in a couple of weeks. Next, not next Saturday, but the following Saturday. And it will be that Saturday, the following Saturday, and Lazarus Saturday. We'll be receiving uh, nine catechumens into the church uh, through baptism and or chrismation. So um, you're welcome to, to, to be a part of that. Otherwise, uh, please take a note of the uh, announcements of the bulletin. Um, and uh, find out what's happening here at St. Herman's. Are there announcements from you, birthdays, anniversaries, announcements I've overlooked or that you'd like to see emphasized? Wonderful. <laughs> Christ is in any birthdays. Christ is in our midst. He is. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Mike Christopher had a birthday. Oh, Marion's Christopher had a birthday. Okay, well, we'll see many years. You convey that to him for us. Anyone else? God bless you. Christ is in our midst. Yes, sir, shall we? And the Lord of the peace will I help from their salvation and our letters and all good things. But I serve in Christian for the occasion of his birthday and keep it with thanks in for many years. God bless you, man.